Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today Learns Felkit Part 3 for Endpoints and no JavaScript on. We're going to go ahead and clean up the application a little bit more. We're going to make our endpoints look a little bit nicer. And then we're going to go ahead and um, fix post editing and the sign out. Let's go ahead and dig into our demo first. So we're already got no JavaScript on. And go ahead and sign in and sign out. Look, we have a nice little success message now. Sign in, you can still see that success message here. Go ahead and do a new post on this page. Hello, YouTube. Have it successfully there. If I went ahead and edit it, exclamation marks, edits properly, and then we can also delete it. And I can sign out. So, and of course, everything still works with JavaScript on. I'm not going to go over all of that, but you could go check it out in the source code. So let's go ahead and see what changed here. Let's look at the sign out first. So we have this sign out here, the delete. We got rid of the get request. So we only have the delete endpoint now. It, everything is the same in here. The main difference is down here at the bottom, we're going to go ahead and check if it's a non-JavaScript user. We're going to go ahead and 200 response, give it a success T, otherwise we're going to throw it with an error. And we're going to go ahead, so we don't have all of the extra statements here for the responses. We're just going to go ahead and throw it in here with an error. And otherwise we'll have, let it be responding uh, down below with, with JavaScript on. Let's jump over to the nav to look at that form. So now we have an input form with action, and it's users, and then it's going to be sign out, and then it's going to say underscore method delete. And of course, post method still, and I'm going to just say inline, so that way it shows up uh, inline a display. I go ahead and have input here with a submit. It's going to have a value of sign out. I'm going to make sure I have a cursor pointer on it because I want it to look like the links do. And then I'm going to go ahead and call uh, for not logged in still, and then the handle sign out is the same above. So this is still all the same. This is now a form with this uh, weird underscore method delete. How does that work? Let's go actually look in our hooks real quick. We didn't actually change this, and I actually got this methodology right here uh, from this to build this response is to get the query and get this meth underscore method. So this is just a, an extra variable that's available within the query parameters, otherwise default back to the requests method. And so this is from the SvelteKit demo application. And I just thought that was a good little way to be able to handle things like deletes and puts, and I thought that, that was a good idea that they did. So I'm also doing that. We're going to be doing the same thing for other places deleting as well. Go ahead and we'll look at those in just a moment. So we have the sign out covered. Sign in did the same cleanup here with the 200 and the success and the error. And I went ahead and I'm just always setting this set cookie response as well as on the hosting. All of these I just cleaned up to add the success T or some error. I wanted to return the actual response message. I could get that from the uh, response object I have. It's a JSON meta success or something. And then that can actually display it rather than just the word success. But right now I'm just hard coding that in. And we'll go ahead and we'll look at those in a moment. So body title all cleaned up the same as the sign in. So this is the body login body uh, password. This is just body content now. So if we look at our form, we just have the title, content, and then above here, we're going to go ahead and just set the title and content with that data rather than passing it within the post object. We're going to go ahead and make a post request for the put as well as the post. So this would normally be a put request on our uh, backend API. Uh, just for ease of this, I just went ahead and put it as a post. Um, otherwise, I'd have to make sure that my action matched the put request. It's going to be a new endpoint. 
that we'll look at in a moment, which is posts and then some ID. It's the one that we'll look at here. And then our action is going to say, hey, if we have a post, it's going to be forward slash posts and then that ID, or just forward slash posts. So this action is actually lines up with the same as these here, except for the fact that this has doesn't have the forward slash, and this one does. I could probably clean that up to make it just be a singular use here and have this automatically get set, but I didn't. Just went ahead and threw that on there real quick like. So let's go ahead and so the first one we've already covered many times. Now we have this new ID one. Nothing else changed in the login other than the success message. So we can close that. Um, real quick, under the APIs, I did move out uh, Dana Woodman's function here. So that's imported in all of these uh, under APIs now. API get form data. So we have this post request at this endpoint. Scroll down, we also have the delete at this endpoint. So two different functions again in the same file, and that's fine, two different endpoints. This one's gonna do the same thing that all the other ones do, building out our body, getting our cookies, making a request to our API endpoint with that ID, and we know that that's fine. Going to make it into a post object because that's what the back end expects for this headless CMS, giving it the bot title and content, passing in the JWT header, AUD header, as well as the JWT. And then if it's a success, putting it out successfully. If it's not, throwing some error. I can go ahead and show you what that error looks like if we wanted to go ahead and just do this real quick. We'll just go ahead and type in some gibberish here. Now the create will not work. I go ahead and say new post and let's do anything here. Should not throw an error. And it's not very descriptive, you know, and it says up here in the URL internal server error, which it was. So we can be more descript with all of that if we wanted to. And you can clean that up however you'd like. The post form I've already covered, and that's the actions using the proper endpoints. And then finally, in the post card here, underneath edit, this is the other to do for the post and delete. So it's going to be forward slash posts, some ID, and then underscore delete, just like the logout was. Again, cursor pointer. I want mine to be inline because I want it to show up side by side, just like this. And if I went ahead, let's just do a new one real quick. I click delete, works just fine. And then of course it's going to do the prevent default and do the handle destroy for people who have JavaScript on still. Otherwise it'll end up submitting to this form. Delete looks just like the other deletes. It's going to go ahead and grab our cookies. It's going to make our API end point request um, as expected, giving the proper AUD and JWT as required. And then the same success message down here with the proper location header set. So fairly simple to ultimately clean this up. Um, we now have all of these types of things working, and then we have a nice enhanced version for our people with JavaScript on, and everything still works, and they have a nice display, success, et cetera, for non-JavaScript users. Next up, we'll go ahead and do non-JavaScript for these protected pages, and we'll do some site mapping and some things like that. So that's it for this episode. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. Uh, we'll continue to build out this Seltcat application, and you can see how you can build a really great thing off some headless CMS. And uh, support me on Patreon if you really like it. That would be fantastic. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you.